Hello my friends. Today I'm going to be trying a reverse dip. I haven't um, done but one of them and it was okay, but I uh, thought I'd get try again. So I got these nifty little bottles, um, just empty little bottles at the craft store with these nozzle tips bought separately and they just screw on and have a tiny little hole. So you get a nice uh, little flow of paint. So let's give that a, a try. I think I'm just going to do a spiral application. I hope my paint is thin enough. I made it um, thin enough to come out of the uh, bottle. This one I think is a little thicker than the other two. That's not a very good spiral. You know what? I'm going to keep going. It's quite a thin line, isn't it? But it's all going to get smushed down anyway, so not too concerned about it. My medium is glue and water, 60-40. Oh, look at that. Something went wrong there. I don't think I had the cap screwed on well enough. That's too bad. Let's try it in this other color. This is the same color with some white in it. And you can see how that blue, it's, uh, what was it? Thalo blue, I think. It's very purple. Um, because when you add white, I mean, look, I'm getting a lavender color. So, and now some white. So I'm not being terribly methodical about it at all. You get a little more of that dark. Screw the lid on a little better. Now well, maybe it is on there tight enough. I don't know what the deal is. It needs a little more of this dark color. All right, <laughs> what a mess. Well, not too impressed with those. Those lids, I'll tell you. Okay, now just for fun, I'm going to uh, skewer some lines through it. In fact, yeah, I'll just go. So I could have gone all the way across. All right, now I'm going to put a um, paper napkin on top. The last time I tried with saran wrap, and it worked out okay, but I want to see, compare the two. And with the fold on it, it, it uh, you can find the center very easily if that makes a difference. Okay, I'll gently tap that down a bit. Tapping outward. And also the last time I did it was with Floetrol, so I don't know. This is a pretty thin mix. I think I mentioned 60-40 glue water. Okay, let's see what happens. Slowly and carefully lifting up in the opposite corners. And maybe again. 
one. And slowly and carefully lifting straight up. mess aside. Okay, well, I don't know why I got a straight line going across like that. And well, let's find, hit it with the heat gun. Not the heat gun, the torch. popping some bubbles no no cells I didn't add any silicone um, okay well that's not very impressive right now I'm going to I'm gonna move it around a little bit for starters It's not going to be a flower anymore when I'm done. I don't think. I want to run it off each side, or at least three of them. I'm going to go a little asymmetrical with it. Go to this corner. And then off here. I'm not limited to just flowers, you know? You can. think this could make a lovely background. I'm always looking at my pores with eyes to embellish them, so I don't care if they don't look like how I intended. I can always transform it. Okay, now I'm going to do something Take it one step further, I think. Um, yeah, you know, maybe not. No, I'm not going to. What I'm seeing here, and call me crazy, I'm seeing a, a landscape um, water here. This is, if, if this were the horizon line, this would be the reflection in the water, and that would be trees and kind of distant mountains. And that's how I would um, embellish it. You know, just define those features a bit. Um, and now I wish I hadn't gone with green, though. I wish I had gone with a blue background <laughs> if I knew this was going to be the outcome. But that can be painted when it's dry. Anything can be changed. What I was thinking of doing was spritzing it with... Um, rain -X to bring up a bunch of cells, but you know what? I'm, I think I'll leave it as is, and maybe I'll do the, when it dries, I'll, I'll do the embellishment on video because I think it'll be quite simple. I just want to fix up this one little corner here. And bring it down a bit. I have okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty. Maybe I'll just save this video and and do um, the embellishment. I'll tack it on so it's all one video because as is, it's not that impressive. <laughs> but I. 
I do see some potential. So we'll stop now and I'll return when I can finish it up. Bye now. Hello, my friends. <laughs> well, I completely switched gears on this embellishment. I think I mentioned in the previous portion of the video that I was thinking of doing a um, landscape out of it, kind of a, um, you know, reflection in the water, but uh, I decided against that, mainly because the horizon line would be right in the middle of the canvas, and that, that's not good composition-wise. You want to have it um, not smack dab in the center. Well, you know, further down, maybe have two-thirds of it be the sky and a third be the reflection or vice versa. But anyway, that's why I decided not to. But I was turning it around and figuring out what could I do with it. And I, I saw this goofy ostrich face head in here. And so I thought that's what I would do. So I just sketched in with the chalk um, basic placement of the eyes and the shape of the beak. And I'm just going for it. I, I'd experimented with one eye. I'll do the other eye and the beak in front of you and um, hope I can match the eyes. If I might have to change that one up depending on what I do over here. I'm going to do the whole thing with this little round brush. It's a uh, number four round brush. You can make it, you know, you can flatten it out and get nice wide lines with it. You can um, have it be very sharp point. So it's a very utilitarian brush. I'm only using three colors, white, phthalo blue, and black. Can you see that? There we go, white, phthalo blue, and black. Um, oh, <laughs> my dog's trying to get in here. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start with the pupil. Just gonna base that in. Kind of a long, oval shape and then around it uh, I'm going to mix some phthalo blue and white kind of a medium tone blue and paint in the pupil And I think I picked up a little more white and kind of uh, highlighted it with some light blue. I wiped off my brush and I'm kind of blending it together. I've lost the darker blue like I have there. I'm going to have to go back and add some of that in just around the pupil. And I don't give a whole lot of thought to this, these type of embellishments. I, I just kind of wing it. So I'm just letting you into my my thought process how I, how I do things. Cleaning up the shape of that pupil a bit. All right, now let's see. It looks like I. Did some uh, kind of a light blue eyelid. So back in the blue and a lot of white. And I'm kind of flattened out the brush and I'm going to make a nice little eyelid. Sweeping across the top of it there, flatten it down and over there. And now maybe a little darker, maybe a little that looks kind of like I did a blue-black thing. Blue-black with a little bit of white, perhaps. And doing an under-eye shadow. Doesn't look like the same color at all, but... <laughs> That's more gray over that side. Just add a little black to my brush and do that. OK. 
Okay, now, now I, um, I did the lashes with this brush. You see, I've made it into a, where can you see it? I flattened it out so it's very pointy. And I just started like applying a lady's eyeliner, kind of a sweeping line above the eye and across and out. And then um, I just kind of made long lashes with this brush, but then I didn't, it just didn't, um, it wasn't wispy enough for me. So, I'm going to use a, a gel pen. And that's one of these. You can buy them anywhere. They're, um, well, this was a set. I bought at Walmart, I think. But I like a Jelly Roll brand. This is not that brand, but um, this one will do. And just kind of feather it out a little, a little more. You get finer lines with this, and it goes well on top of the uh, acrylic paint. And just make them real wispy. Trying to make the two sides match. <laughs> they don't, they don't look that well. Maybe I haven't done this part yet, so. Lower lashes. I don't know if they have lower lashes, but this is kind of a cartoon, a cartoon guy anyway, girl. I may have to uh, touch it up a bit more, make it look the same. All right, it looks so weird at this point without the beak. <laughs> uh, let's add just a touch of white for a little highlight in the eye. Put it in the dark, just a dot in the darkest part of the pupil. I'm going to bring it to life a little bit. Okay, and now the beak. Um, what to do? I think I want to shade that eyelid a little better too. That's the problem with doing, not doing them at the same time. I, um, they look different. <laughs> it's hard to duplicate because I didn't have, as I said, it didn't have a real clear plan. Okay, let's move on to the beak. We can always come back to the eyes if need be. Uh, the beak. Let's see. I think I'll use my palette knife and mix up some light blue, a good amount. So, chunk of white and tiny bit of blue. Whoa, that's a lot of blue. Make another puddle with light blue. And that'll become my shading color. All right, now, actually, I need a bigger brush. Um, hold on a second. Oops. <laughs> Operator error. I'm such a dope. I hit stop instead of resume and went on my merry way, finishing up the painting. So as a way of apology, I'd like to give this painting away to one of my subscribers. 
and I'm sorry I have to limit it to the US only because of the shipping cost. So how to do this? How about if you leave a comment below and after one week I'll put the names in a hat and draw a winner. So check back after a week or so. I'll announce in the description who won and you can contact me via email with your mailing address. Again, my apologies. I will do better next time. <laughs> so good luck and bye for now.